Hi, I'm Twiggy, a Valorant commentator. You might have seen me on VCT or one of many other Valorant broadcasts. I'm here to talk to you about defensive positioning. You might already understand the very basics, wide peaking being the most well-known rule of positioning, but when you look into the stats of First Blood to the highest flight of play, a whole new rule begins to reveal itself. It might sound obvious. Which corners you hold has an impact on your likelihood of getting away with a kill instead of being taken out yourself. But the best part about analyzing professional play is we can let them do all the nitty gritty work, learning defaults, and we can just compile their data and see what translates well to the stage. I employed the help of a couple of my friends, Seasonal and Charles, to dig some data on some stage three games. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at defense first bloods and when defense gives away first bloods to the other team. And then we're gonna be doing a little bit of a deep dive into Fnatic's Ascent and Bind games and seeing what we can learn from the data we can find. Take a look at Ascent. Where would you expect first kills to come from? Generally, we'd be taking a look at jet operator positions, right? Well, let's overlay every defender's first blood positions onto the map. A healthy amount of advanced positions here and there with common jet operator spots in A main, A short, and B main, but largely safe default with hotspots at garden, heaven, and lane. Okay, well, there's not much we can infer from this, so let's throw on our first death positions. That's more like it. Hotspots in advanced locations in mid, B link, and a healthy amount over in stairs too. We'll get into why that's such a hotspot and what we can learn from it at the end of the video, but for this lesson, I'm not gonna do something as benign as telling you don't push up on attack. You already know that if you want to push up as a defender, you should be aware that you're at a disadvantage inherently. I want to focus on a couple of death spots, so let's switch over to our Fnatic stats. Look here, on a short, we have a player who has died in the far corner here. This is significant for a couple of reasons, but let's take a look at another example. Look here, at Switch. Now these positions share something in common. Without diving into technicalities, they are inescapable positions. There is nowhere either of these players can go to disengage from a fight without movement abilities or smokes, neither of which are a get out of jail free card. Let's composite these over each other and blur the dots. Now we get a very rough idea of the best and worst locations to hold as defensive defaults on ascent, with yellow zones generally being evenly traded. Okay, let's switch over to Fnatic's bind defense. There are some very interesting cases here too. As before, you can see the operator player making up a large portion of the opening kills and deaths, such as on B long, but we also have a massive amount of rifle picks on B short. On the flip side, you can see four deaths in A short cubby and another two in ninja corner with more around the corner. Again, these are inescapable locations. Here, you either get a kill or get killed. However, due to Pika's advantage, you're generally going to lose out if your opponent checks the corner. Again, we'll composite these and blur the dots, giving us what I think is actually a brilliant heat map of zones you should be using and avoiding holding corners from on bind. A B short peak is actually very favorable, with easy cover and several corners to hide behind after your shot, backing into hookah, and an A short push or a ninja position is generally unfavorable, with no easy route to escape through. Now, Think back to that massive stairs hotspot on stage 3 ascent heat map. Why do you think so many deaths happen there? Let's try to think of a quick escape route from that position. You have two options. The quickest one, run back into CT, exposing yourself to main and market, or back yourself into a corner further by moving in towards boathouse, exposing yourself to lane and stairs. You might think of stairs as a safe default to hold a corner from because it's far away from main and you have a wall to hide behind but it is not safe whatsoever. In conclusion, what we can draw from this data can be condensed into one simple rule. Always have an escape plan. Whether that's using movement abilities and tight corners to your advantage, or sitting in safe defaults with good cover providing a disengage opportunity, more emphasis should be placed on creating smart defensive positions. Now, go out there and smoke some ranked lobbies. A massive thank you to my friends Seasonal and Charles for helping make this video possible. Please go drop them a follow on social media, it's right down there. And thank you for watching.